What's going on, fellow humans and resellers? It's his I, James, redoptionagency.com. 22 years selling full-time on eBay. Welcome to Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Uh, remind me. Let's go over new store, since it's Monday. Gotta remember to go over the new store numbers. See where we're at there. Um, I've got an item here that... Kind of an example of why you don't listen to everybody. Because, you know, the whole thing... Saying that I like... Um, everybody's got an answer, but nobody has a clue. Uh, kind of plays into a lot of reselling stuff when it comes to people commenting on things. Oh, that won't sell making up excuses, et cetera, et cetera. But got a kind of an example of that. Why you just don't listen to everybody. And if you're doing your thing, do your thing. Do your thing, man. Um, so far the weekend, let's see what the numbers were. I'm gonna go just the US eBay site. Instead of pulling, in, or should I just go international? Let's just pull international too. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see. I'll give the number with and without. How about that? Because I'm kind of curious to see if the international sales over the weekend. So Friday, we're going to start with Friday. Friday was the best of the three days. And I went into traffic instead of sales. So Friday, I did pretty well. And Friday had no issues with the site. Everything seemed to be uh, working properly. And you know, usually on days when that happens, we usually have decent dollar days. So Friday, the U.S. website only $1,048.42, up 27%. Um, net sales, $688.82. So nice little money into the pocket there. All right, so it's 1048. Now we're going all the international eBay sites and nothing, <laughs> nothing Friday. So $1,048.42 on Friday. Saturday. Nope, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. All right, so Saturday I started having website issues. And the number kind of reflects that. 600, this is with international, $650.79. Down 37% from the day before. So 650 with internationals. U.S. site, 650.79. So no international order Saturday either, which kind of makes sense on those days when I have problems. It's just, it stinks for international. Sunday, U.S. site only, $861. Had a little issue Sunday, but not too many. Uh, not as many as Saturday, and definitely not as many as today already. Um, so $861. See if I had any international. Yes, $890, $890 altogether yesterday with international. So that was the only day I got international sales. So not a bad start, or not a bad weekend, I should say. Friday, I sold 90 items, so almost back up to that 100 uh, mark. So 90 items sold on Friday, only 51 on Saturday, and then 69 yesterday. So back into that volume game. Today, we're at 2 o'clock, halfway through my day. I'm at $162. That stinks. So that's like a $320 day. Uh, you with a little pop at the end. So that's saying that my day is probably going to be about $370, uh, which I hope not because that would be lowest by far. My lowest was $455. But as today is, seems to be going, this is going to be my lowest day after having one of my biggest days Friday. See, I've had three over $1,000 days this month. See if there's any 
rhyme or reason here. One was on a Thursday, one was on a Friday, and then that one was on a Friday. So, Friday's beating out the Saturdays, but, and Sundays. But it is summer. Weekends are, uh, you know, one of those things that's up in the air on weekends because you never know people out doing what they do taking vacations and such like that so but today's a bummer day um yeah so after 69 items sold was it 69 sold yesterday and then i had 10 hours overnight with two sales so i was doing all good and then boom so that's like 20 in 20 hour probably less than 20 hours no nah, let's just call it 20 hours 20 hours had 69 items sell and then the next four of that day and six of the next day, two. So if that don't tell you something shuts down at night, there's no other way I can convince you that there's problems. Like the night before and the night before, I had sales almost every hour throughout the night. So, so 10 hours with only two sales definitely is shut down. And it is Sunday night. And Sunday nights seem to be that pattern where they are doing some big maintenance on Sunday nights. So today, probably an indexing day. I am getting server errors and system failures as I'm trying to list. So another day of huge problems there. And the last one I had huge problems was that lowest day of the last 31 days where I only made it to 455. So uh, today, I don't know what to expect because it feels like I'm gonna have that indexing all over again, as most of this is media the indexing all over again but with the server errors on top of it and system failures i have no clue what today is going to turn out to be like so i am i'm predicting it's going to be my lowest day but i'm hoping that it rebounds and things will get fixed during the day here but um oh, i guess i should be happy with anything over 400 dollars today unfortunately that's pretty sad but that is the old store. So before we get shipping and talking about some subjects, so I think I'm going to talk about just how the reasons why I do what I do and build how I built my store, just because there's so many sellers on YouTube that keep pushing sell through rate, sell through rate, sell through rate, sell through rate. And if I don't put out there the opposite and how I do things and more people than not going to think that's the only way there is. And some may just give up on it because I can't find no items with high sell-through rate. You know, and they're listening to them people and only those people. And they're not exploring other channels that have, that do it for, you know, do it another way, if you will. Um, so if, let me just say this. If you like the, not, not even, if, not if, how about this? If you understand that there's other ways to do it, hit the like on this video share it, whatever, comment, even at just an emoji in the thing to try to get the, the video to pop. Because um, the only way more people's going to hear about it is for it to get out there more and get into the algorithm. So any uh, support would be appreciated. So new store. So Friday on the new store had $52 in sales. Only 21 on Saturday, and then $58 on Sunday. Today I'm at $18 already. So still a lot more, uh, feels like a lot more consistency on this. And <laughs> I was going to... I was hoping to get a lot of clothes this weekend for yard sales, but it turned into the opposite. So, so that's where we are there. Um, last seven days, $309. Last 30 days, $1,700. Uh, this year with this store, we're getting ready to hit $2,000. So that's not quite, well, it's about a month and a half. So $2,000. So that's where we are. So I haven't given this store any attention <laughs> this weekend because I ended up 
I went, I was headed toward a subdivision sale, but I got sidetracked by a yard sale. I turned down the street and I'm like, oh, I think this is the one that I hit before with the, the older lady and what probably was her son. And I bought that hat at and those vinyl records, the typewriter. And actually it was the one next to it. They were still having theirs and it was one next to it. So I stopped there first, walked in, saw like 20 plus boxes of vinyl. Three people were going through it already. As soon as I walked in, he said, uh, the vinyl's a dollar a piece, but I'm open because I just want it gone. And as a reseller, as a volume reseller, and then you see all that, you hear that, you're like, ah, the heavenly gates have opened for me. And my, my uh, favorite words to say is how much for it all? Um, God, I, I said, that's see selling buying and selling like that just that's what makes me happy you know going through a rack just looking for high sell through rates and walking out of eight of ten stores dis, you know uh disappointed <laughs> that would suck with me with my process i could go anywhere at any time and i'm going to find something to make money on and i love it like that that's the exciting part of it so i ended up I had to make two lows, but it was only two blocks away from my house. So uh, about 2,000 vinyl records. And uh, I go, well, how much for it all? How much you want for it all? And I go, he goes, uh, $200. I'm like, cool, done, deal. And I go, after, they, after they're done looking, but no new people can look. He's like, agreed. So we agreed on that, let the three that was in there finish out pulling out what they wanted paid a dollar a piece for him actually they didn't even pay a dollar a piece the one had 10 he goes give me five or something like that so he's one of the stuff gone so uh made two trips back home by that time i'm stinking sweaty and i'm like i'm done i got to get started on this final because it's taking up the whole living room i got to start getting through this so I didn't even go back out to yard sales to look for clothes or anything for the new store. So uh, I am, what, five boxes in now, I think. <laughs> uh, but then I'm going to give another little shout out here because I think it's what's causing. Now, as I've talked about before, my midsection, I've always been trying to build up the strength because of my two, um, I've got two herniated discs that were cut. And instead of getting them fused together, I've been trying to find other ways around it. So I started with the leg lift exercises while I brushed my teeth. And then that like made my balance like super crazy, better than it's ever been before. Um, so then I was looking for the next step and I started doing the little planks. So I've been doing planks. I got up, I'm up, I still haven't gone over a minute 30 per plank. But I'll do, you know, anywhere from five, seven, ten of them a day throughout the day. And uh, so when I was carrying all this vinyl, normally when I carry heavy boxes, not even heavy boxes, just awkward boxes, my back is usually shot for three or four days. And I'm taking muscle relaxers and pain pills. And I didn't do anything easy carrying this vinyl because I'm, I'm holding up a huge box of vinyl, trying to wedge it into my car to get stack you know two stacks together so i wasn't taking it easy and i'll go god my back's going to be so screwed woke up the next day my back is fine the only thing i've changed is doing these doing this planking stuff so try it if you have back issues because um you know start with the whole balance thing that builds muscle and then start do some planking and then my I was gonna wait 30 days to make sure I enjoyed it and it was doing things and I was gonna buy that pure plank thing from Edge and Christian. That's their popular names, but uh, Christian Cage and Adam Copeland, they put together a, a mat type of thing with handles and a timer and everything. And I was like, well, if I go 30 days and I you know, keep with it and this works and it seems like it's doing something, I'll buy it. Well, the boys bought it for me for father's day so now i don't have to buy that so i still got to get that set up but i'm kind of i'm going to put it in my office because that's where i do it most of the time but right now i'm kind of filled in there with some vinyl so i just got to do it wherever i can <laughs> for right now 
So I just wanted to say that if you have any back problems, give that a shot. But um, onward. So as of right now, not many sales. Like I said, $162 at 218 So not much. But, oh, and I'm going to take you to a comment to start off this conversation about the way I do things and how it may be different than others. A uh, person asked, will I test all these? No, I will not. I do not test any of the media. Um, I just guarantee it. So if there's any problems, they can let me know and I give them a refund. Um, let's see. Um, they are back to selling records in some stores like Target, and they are 35 bucks. Yeah, I think Target, though, is ending their media now also. So they're not even going to be selling media much longer. Um, but I got a question here. It says, did you buy these off the at a sale off McKelvey? Yes, I did. Uh, this person, James, named James also. I went by there Saturday morning. So he got there before me. They had over 20 boxes of records, but most were rap and singles. And covers weren't the greatest shape. That is correct. On a lot of them, the covers are messed up. Not too many so far. But like I said, I'm only five boxes in. I looked through for a while, but didn't see the value in them really. I'm sure some do have value, but I look for rock albums. This guy didn't have any. Um, so I wanted to make a point here. Like, so there's different ways of doing it. This James was looking for the stuff I love to find. The nice sell-through high dollar classic rock and stuff like that. But that being said, when I walked in and when he said what he said, that opened up a whole window. If, if he wouldn't have budged on a dollar... I probably wouldn't have paged through any of it. I might have paged through a couple boxes because it looked like mostly 12-inch um, singles. So being that he was open for to just to move it all, I knew I was going to be able to get it super cheap. And then my look at when I saw it, I saw value in volume. I also saw value in that a lot of the 12-inches the were like, 99 to about 2005 uh rap and uh rhythm and blues a lot that and it was all from a dj collection so my thought was i think a like late 90s early 2000s that music's going to really start coming around again and you're probably going to have some djs wanting to pick up that stuff again if they don't have it so i see it coming back um soon so that was another thought in my head. Plus, just like every thought, um, even though three other people were going through it, they're not going to find everything of value. So, I mean, just the first five boxes I went through, the stack of $14 plus stuff I listed was a good, probably maybe 100 uh, pieces of vinyl. So uh, as of right now, I'm probably about $3,800 in listed value on the stuff I've listed so far out of five boxes. And when you do volume, all it's about is making your money back as soon as possible. And then everything else is for tomorrow. I list, like I've said before, I list for tomorrow. I don't list for today. And by tomorrow, I mean next week, next month, next year, five years from now. It doesn't matter to me. Sell through rate doesn't matter because a lot of the stuff that I've sold, and I've said this a million times before, that I put stuff in storage 15 years ago are, is worth more now. So the used market, the great thing about used market is 95% of stuff goes up in value. Um, you do have your stuff like some of the, the uh, late 90s action figure, um, sports action figures that are still the same. Uh, maybe like the mid-90s uh, Star Wars toys, pretty much still the same. So you do have your pockets of stuff that, that just do not go up in value, at least not anytime soon. Uh, but overall, most of the stuff eventually goes up in value because it everything works on a cycle. 
whether it's clothing, music you listen to, toys, cars, um, de house, how you de interior decorating of a house, everything comes in cycles. So if sell-through rate is just one aspect of, the way I look at it is one aspect of a business. Um, some people make that solely the business, but I'm about many avenues for a business because then you're, you're, you're hooked on longevity. If you are just sell through rate, sell through rate, sell through rate, that's all you care about. You have to put work in daily on those items to succeed because chances of you finding great sell through rate in volume, slim. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's slim. Like I heard a statement the other day when somebody keeps saying, well, if you, uh, you list a self or a truckload full of iPhones, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, who's going to have a self, who's going to have a truckload of cell phones, iPhones, nobody, nobody's going to have that. Not even the retailers who have permission to sell those are really going to have a, probably a truckload of them. But so when you hear things like that, you got to throw that out the window because that's not realistic. So you have to stay in the realistic world. Sell through rates, you've got to put in a lot more time finding instead of a lot more time listing. Um, and then the problem with that model is you got to keep going every day, every day, because you can't take a week off, a two weeks off. With what I've created, I could take a month off and I'm still going to pretty much have the same sales throughout the throughout the entire month, except for those higher sell through rate things that I end up listing that day or this day or that day. Those are the only ones that's going to really downfall. I'm still going to have sales that I put up yesterday, the week before, the month before, the year before. Those items are still going to be selling on each of those days. So um, when I built this business, I wanted to build it like if you had a storefront and you just got everything and put it out there, and you could walk in. What One thing I love is walking into those stores where you can go into a corner somewhere and there's just boxes with dust on them and you can dig through there and find stuff. That's the basis of what I built my store on. The amount of emails that I get from people that say, I love going through your store, gives me that feel of me in a corner going through a dusty box that's been sitting there for a year that's what I get a feeling I get when I get those emails saying, I love going through your store. I love going through your store. And it happens pretty often. Uh, so that's how I built the business is not sell through rate is not the only way to do it. Uh, but then also you got to have the room to do it. That's probably the only, actually it's not even a problem because it's a profitable business where if you had to say you're, you're, place you're working out of is a quarter of this size you still should be able be able to make enough if you can list quickly and get that stuff listed if you're buying by volume to be able to afford okay i've got to expand all businesses usually who do well expand so if you're doing well in your space you're in you can expand to a storage area okay now you're storing stuff in the storage area and that might have doubled your inventory, which could be doubling your income. So it's not, you just have to go about it a different way. That's, that's all I'm saying. Um, there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever you like, whatever you enjoy, because you got to do what you enjoy. If you enjoy going out every day, looking for sell through rates, and that's all you care about, and you enjoy the hell out of it, that is perfect. But if you want to just build a long-term business that's going to be making your kids money long after you're dead, then this is kind of the model you'd go with. So, and you have to enjoy it because it's a lot more listing than looking where sell through rates, a lot more looking than listing. So, uh, you have to enjoy it no matter which one you do. So both of them are hard. 
Um, it's easier to uh, source nowadays when you got, you know, Google Lens and everything. So, but um, it, it takes, for me in my eyes, it takes longer to find 100, sell th 100 great sell-through items. It takes longer to find that than 1,000 items in bulk. And I can probably list it in about the same amount of time you would list 100 if they're not all the same. And probably make about the same amount of money. So you got to tweak your, your, you know, you've got to um, tweak your business as you go. If you don't have an open mind to your business the whole time you're going through it. I'll give you an example. When I used to sell on Amazon back in the day, the way the, the shipping prices were, um, there was like a quarter difference between four ounces and five ounces. And some CDs were five ounces if they were older CDs and they had a heavier case on them. Or if they had a thick booklet, they'd come at five ounces. So I would buy bulk jewel cases, the new ones, and the new ones are thinner, lighter. And I, and for 99% of the items, if it registered five, I could put a new case on it, it would register four. And I just made 15 cents per item. And by volume, you make up, you know, the time that it takes to pop and open. And, and if you know how to do it, you can do it really quick anyway. So it, it's just about streamlining yourself. No matter which one you do, you're always finding what, trying to find ways to streamline it because the, the uh, more dollar per hour you can make, the more money you're going to make over time. So uh, that's why I'm always big about cutting seconds off. If you cut a second off of a listing, times that by a thousand, that's that's a lot of time. Because um, you've heard me complain about eBay where they keep adding seconds on the listing times. Like it used to be so much quicker to list on eBay five years ago than it is today, which it shouldn't be. With technology, you sh it shouldn't be going backwards. But unfortunately, eBay is not the best when it comes with technologies as we know. <laughs> so... My point is, you can list for tomorrow and be happy and comfortable and successful, depending on what your definition of success is. So, mine is doing what I love and sleeping peaceful at night. That's my idea of success. Everything else is a bonus. The fact that I'm able to drive a Porsche, that's a bonus, right? The fact that I can take business trips for a whole week in the Smoky Mountains, that's a bonus. So everything else is just bonuses because I've got my dream of living a stress-free, peaceful life. Don't have to be a millionaire to do that. So that's why I try to build the, the YouTube for because if you can build the YouTube to, for extra income, then that just adds to your bonuses. So that's, that's the YouTube for me is all bonuses. So <laughs> that's why I have more fun, uh, trying to, uh, crack the algorithm or create the right title or whatever for YouTube because it's nothing but bonus. So I don't have to do it perfectly. I don't have to spend an hour editing videos because it's just, just the bonus. Let's ship out these few items and get this done. Like, nothing's sold since we've started this video 29 minutes ago. So this is eBay today, So unfortunately. It's going to be an ugly day on eBay. And with the server errors, I won't be surprised if there's another blank overnight because they did more maintenance. St. Louis Cardinals cap. Well, let me go ahead and print or mark ship, get shipping label. And like I said, I got one item here that kind of represents why you, another reason why you just don't listen to people. You know, you do what you do, do your thing, be confident in what you do, and enjoy the hell out of it. Ten. 
Next up, we got this Easton softball cap. That one sold for $10.50. This sold for $5.50. So yeah, I've been taking offers on whatever I could today. Try to get the piece count up in hopes that that would stimulate something. But I don't think on days like this, anything will stimulate. I've made $27 back on my $200 haul. Uh, Saturday. Oh, and to add to that, so I, he said $200 for all the vinyl, so I hand him $200. He goes, here, here's $20 back. I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> because me, I know of a lot of them are 12-inch singles, and I don't see them selling soon. So I'm like, okay, I'll take your 20 back. And then he started handing me another 20. He's like, ah, here, let's just do 160. I'm like, no, keep it. I'm pretty sure I could. he knew at that time I was going to resell them. I'm like, got an offer. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can, I'm safe at 180 when it comes to how quick or how slow that the items will move. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'll make a profit at 180. Don't worry about it. And he's like, hey, I got this Metallica album. I was going to just go and trade in at a, at a record store. Uh, you'd be interested. I'm like, sure. So he brought it out. And I looked at it and it was a European pressing of master puppets but a white label and it was throwing me a white label i'm like white label and it wasn't a white label promo so i'm like huh so then i so i looked it up and i didn't look by barcode or anything so i was just looking it up and i could not find a white label metallica master of puppets i'm like is this thing bootleg because if it is it's a damn good looking bootleg like i don't think it is but there's something i'm missing here uh, so I found one similar on Discogs going for 60 bucks, And I go, he goes, how much? He, he said, I want 20 bucks for it. I'm like, all right, I'll give you 20 For me, it's just adding to my $200 I spent total on the vinyl. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take it for that. I get home and then do re finally got that, be able to do research. It took me like five minutes to find it. But it turned out to be a 2001 re-release European edition. And the cheapest one was $100. So I'm like, ah, even bonus. So I put it in my store for $149 um, with best offer. And then I'll use it to get... I put things a little bit higher sometimes like that to get traffic. People, because it's the only one on eBay. So people will click on it, get into my store. And if they really want it, they'll send an offer. Um, but it'll generate some good traffic. And then eventually I'll knock it down to the $100 mark and let it go. If somebody doesn't send me an offer. So don't be afraid to do that if you do find good stuff and you do run a long sell or slow sell through rate store. Uh, if you find some high value item that's got a good sell through rate, don't be afraid to up the price a little bit more than everybody else. Put a best offer on it and use that to generate traffic into your store. It's almost like free advertisement. So. That's something I've always done for many, many years. Many years. Next up, we've got Kiss Animal Eyes on cassette, sold for six fifty. Point headed to California. trash can that's stuck to my leg. Keep doing that. Alrighty. Jordan. So yeah, I made $37 back on the $200 stuff so far. So, working our way up already. Got this 45 record, Delta Child by Glenn Lonesdale. Uh, sold for $20. Headed to Flint, Michigan. And I need to grab a mailer. Flint, Michigan. Oh, the next item is the item I've been talking about. My 
tool. So on that yard sale a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, I bought those Blu-rays and DVDs. So I had several people condemning it, if you will. And then some saying, yeah, you're, um, they're re-releasing a lot of those. You're not going to be able to make your money back. I got a lot of, they're re-releasing those. So you probably, you know, they're going to be hard to move. Got some saying, you're not going to be able to make your money back, et cetera, et cetera. I made my money back a long time ago. But one in particular that a couple people pointed out was Fear City. Because I paid, what did I pay for it? I don't remember on the video. Just $10? Like, it was one of those added extra for, like, 10 bucks. I believe it was $10. You can go back to, and watch it if you if I'm wrong. It's somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's 10 And I was being dogged for paying $10 for Fear City on Blu-ray. And this is the reason why you, you don't listen to everybody. Sold for $54. So, $54 headed to Canton, Illinois. So... That's why I don't pay attention to people who will come on and try to say, oh, you don't know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. It's, like, it's more about me. It's more about the person not willing to learn anything than it is about what I'm doing. And that's why I always talk about keep an open mind with everything. There are two people in the world, the ones that will laugh at you and the others who will think about it. Because, well, you're doing it for a reason. Why is that? Let me learn. And then there's the people, ha, you're a dummy. You don't know what you're doing. And then, you know, don't be that person. No matter what you see somebody doing, figure out why they are doing it. Sure, it could be for a dumb reason after you find out. But keep an open mind about it. Michael. So hopefully those few people who said I was dumb for paying $10 for that just heard that. $54. So. I may not know what I'm doing some of the time, but at least some of the time I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> and at least it seems like with reselling the majority, is, the, at least the majority is higher know what you're doing than not knowing because then I'd be going backwards if it wasn't. Uh, Paul Bear and, and the Coffee Kings t-shirt sold for seven bucks. Headed to Los Angeles. I guess that's how you know if you're good at something. Is your success rate is higher, 50 you know, higher than 50% as your fail than your failure rate. You know, higher than your failure rate. So. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm kind of... I've been kind of watching uh, here and there a little bit... Uh, Lindy, her coming back from her failure, you know, just kind of seeing how she handles it and stuff. And there's, you know, the nut thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, you never know how big that can grow into, especially if you got a following on, I mean, you guys support me on these cards. She's probably doing crazy numbers on her nuts, right? So I'm like, oh, that's cool. But then she's been doing stuff that I'm like, why would you... You know, I'm trying to figure out why she would waste time doing it. Like the latest one, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just kind of paged through it of that $10 mystery box. And like, if you knew what kind of stuff's in it, and it, just the click-throughs I done, it just looked like all extremely low-dollar stuff. And for somebody who loves low-dollar stuff, I'm just questioning why she would do that if she's got that much debt on her back. But then I'm like, well, James... That's how you built your business on the, all that little stuff. And so, so I was questioning it first. And then instead of just going, oh man, she's, you know, maybe she should be going the other way. I was actually contradicting my own process in the, in the, in the, uh, in my head, Moody Blues CD. 
sold for six forty five, headed to Massachusetts. So, but yeah, but um, and then who knows? Maybe it's easier to do volume on whatnot, you know, because you're gonna go through a lot more stuff. Because it's going to be, you're gonna get a lot less money for it. That's one reason I haven't touched whatnot yet. Is I already do low volume, low rate stuff. I don't want to go any lower. <laughs> any lower and more work for me wouldn't be worth it. So that's why I've never touched whatnot. Because sometimes when you have a, such a big loss, like she went through with that store, having a series of tiny wins can really build you back up confident-wise, mentally. You know, I'm sure off camera, she's probably a mental mess. I'm going to have to resurface that. You know, well, I can't really say if she is or not, but I would be, you know, if... If something I did failed and I had this debt over my uh, head without an actual plan, and I just got to figure it out again, I'm sure that can be very stressful. And I know it would be for me anyway. Wow Hits DVD sold for six thirty. headed to Texas, Texas. So yeah, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on her, watching, seeing how she handles handles it all and rebounds and stuff like that. Because there's probably people who, like my first thought was, why is she doing that? Where I'm sure the people that come after me for doing slow sell-through rate buying stuff is probably really a you know, coming after her going, you just failed over here. Why are you doing things this way? And being that they don't know any other, you know, they don't know why. Because they're stuck in their own world to understand that that is a way to do it. And that's a good way to do it long term and to build. You know, I don't know if she's, I don't think she's doing eBay though. So I think she's just dropping stuff on Facebook Marketplace. So. Maybe she knows something I don't on that front. You know, me, I would be building an eBay store again. Uh, Tracy Lawrence CD. Sold for $11, headed to Baton Rouge. Because I'd be wanting to build... Because that's what makes me happy, having just consistent money every day. Not having to uh, fight for something every day. Because I'm not at that age anymore. <laughs> and that could have a lot to do with it, too. I'm not at that age where I want to fight every day for money. I'm happy. Just to let the money roll in. Doc Powell cassette sold for seven bucks headed to Los Angeles. again Jamie Grace CD sold for seven bucks headed up to Kansas City so yeah always watch always learn question over laughing <laughs> never think you know it all because there could be something you're missing because everything in the world Depends on variables, no matter what you're doing. No matter what you're doing and how you're doing it, you may be questioned why somebody's doing it a certain way.
because there's a variable that you're missing. And always look for different variables to what you're doing. Because just a tweak here or a tweak there could uh, totally change things for you. And you just haven't realized it yet. Haven't seen it yet. Haven't learned it yet. <laughs> uh, this last name is F-L-I-C-K, but that L and I is pretty close together, and it looked like F-U-C-K. I'm like, what? Did I still does it say that? I missed it. For some reason, like, the, the I moves seems to be moved over a little for some reason. That's funny. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. So today I am taking pictures of all that vine, all those five, going through the first five that I've got drafted and I'm taking the pictures for them and getting them listed because I'm not even, actually, I'm not even through five yet. I started coming into some in number five that I know I made drafts for, or I was pretty sure I made drafts for. So I'm like, crap. So there's no way to search drafts. So I'm like, okay, I gotta go ahead and get all these listed so that I can just add to quantity and not mess anything up like I just messed this up. Why do I got Michael written on both of those? Because you're a dork, James. Uh, dummy. And that is Pat. Okay. I did the wrong thing. Pew, 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 pew. Larry. I'm going back to taking pictures, getting that vinyl listed so I can make my millions over the next 20 years. <laughs> uh, I got three offers that just popped up. That's good. Offers were jaw jacked up today, too. Like, not offers last one last night was 9 45 p.m then had one at 1 45 a.m then had one at 303 a.m then nothing again till about 6 30. so humdy humdy hum So don't be afraid to list for tomorrow. Oop. And I got another vinyl sold. So I was at 27, now I'm at 47. So $47 made back from my 200 so far. And I've just started. I probably got what, maybe 300 listed so far? Making the money back. Yeah, I didn't expect to make it back by Sun Monday because I got so much and so little listed so far. So hopefully I can make that two hundred dollars back by let's say by Friday before next yard sales. So that'd be nice. All right, thanks everybody for hanging out, and I will see you all in the next video later.